Grade 3 math, number 59, divide by 7. We've been doing lots of division lately, and now we're at the 7s. So let's look at our rule. Dividing by 7 means you split the number into 7 equal groups, or you could put 7 in each group. Either way, it'll work. You find how many times 7 can fit into that number. All right, let's take a look at our first one here. We've got lots of dots. We've got 28 dots here. So what we're going to do is, we're going to circle groups of 7, and we're going to see how many groups we get. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there's 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's another one. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's another one. You see where this is going? For those of you who are quick-witted, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Some of you already know how many groups we have here, don't you? One, two, three, four. Four groups. 28 divided by 7 equals 4. We have four groups with 7 in each group. Now we also could have done 7 circles, 7 groups. But that would have been harder because we wouldn't have known how many groups to make. I mean, we would have known how many groups to make. We wouldn't have known how many to put in each group. I'm sorry. That's what I meant. So, let's take a look at this next one. We've got 21 divided by 7. In this method, what we're going to do is we're going to take turns putting a dot in each group until we've filled them and counted to 21. We've got 7 groups because we've got a 7 here, and we're going to put in 21 dots taking turns in each group. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. See how I did that? So now how many do we have in each group? We have three. So twenty-one divided by seven is three. See how easy that was to do? This is my favorite method, aside from having your times table memorized. Because look, 3 times 7 equals 21. If you knew that, you wouldn't have had to do this bottom part. You would have just known right away because you would have known your times table. Okay, let's look at this one. 7 divided by 7. We have 7 dots here, and we're going to make 7 groups. Ready? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Seven. How many dots are in each group? One. This is like the identity property in multiplication. This is the same thing. A number that's divided by itself always equals one. Let's try this one. Fourteen divided by seven. Let's look at the number line. This number line counts by sevens going up. Let's see how many times we have to jump by 7 to get to 14. Ready? 1, 2. 2. 14 divided by 7 equals 2, because 2 times 7 equals 14. See the inverse operation going the other direction? Multiplication is the inverse, or the opposite, of division. So 14 divided by 7 equals 2, and 2 times 7 equals 14. Let's use the number line again. Doing 7 goes into 35. So, here's the 35, and we're going to count by sevens and see how many times we jump. One, two, three, four, five. Five. And we're going to write the answer right above the five, because we didn't put seven into three, we put seven into 35, so it goes above the ones place. Seven times five is 35. We do our subtraction and get a remainder of zero. 63 divided by 7. Okay, number line again. Here's the 63. Let's see how many times we skip count by 7 to the 63. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9. 63 divided by 7 equals 9. And you know what? 9 times 7 equals 63. See that? You should see my 9 times table video about tricks. 
I have a neat tricks video that tells you that the nine times table always equals nine. Six plus three equals nine. Look at that. Nine times six is fifty-four. Five and four equals nine. You should check that video out. It's about neat tricks for the nine times table in my Joanne School videos. All right, now I've got a different way of doing it here. It's almost the same as doing it this way, except now we're going to do it in columns. We've got seven columns, and we've got 49. And we're going to split this 49 up into these seven columns. And each column is going to get its turn. Ready? I'm going to count to 49. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. Now all we need to do is count how many is in one of the columns. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And guess what? 7 times 7 equals 49, so that makes sense that 49 divided by 7 is 7. Now we have 42. Let's use the number line again. Here's the 42. Let's skip count to see how many times we can skip 7 to get to 42. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We're going to put the 6 above here again because we're not putting 7 into 4. We're putting it into the entire 42, and by putting the 6 above the 2, that lets everyone know that we used the whole 42 and not just a 4, because 7 doesn't fit into 4, does it? So, now we say 7 times 6 is 42. We do our subtraction and get 0. Okay? Now we're going to do the circles again to do 7 goes into 56. We've got 7 groups and we're going to count and take turns going to the number 56. Are you ready? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. See, I almost miss, messed up there. I have to make sure there's enough in each one so that they're all equal. See how I almost messed up and I forgot to put some down here and I had to fix that. So, I'm human. So now let's count how many we have in one circle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that how much we've got in all of them? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. So, seven goes into 56 eight times. We do our multiplication right here. Seven times eight is 56. We do our subtraction and we get a remainder of zero. Now, why do I keep saying we get a remainder of zero? Well, let's say we did seven goes into 56 and we made the mistake and said instead of eight, we said it was seven times. We'd say, okay, seven times seven is, ooh, seven times seven is 49. Okay. We would do our subtraction and we'd have seven left over. By having 7 left over, that means we could have fit one more 7 in here. So instead of that being there, it should have been an 8, because one more would have fit in, see? That is why it's important to have a remainder of 0. We want to prove that we fit all of them in there that we could. So, that's dividing by 7. Keep practicing your times table. Try doing some of these when you're trying to do division. Try circling some dots. Put the dots on how many there are in the beginning of the equation, and then circle that many of them and see how many groups are left. You can skip count on a number line. You can use the column method. That tells you how many columns you need, and that tells you how many times you have to count. And you can use this method 
of that's how many circles, groups you need, and that's how many times you have to count and put dots in them. That's how many dots there were. There's a lot of different ways to figure out a division answer, a quotient as it's called. I'll see you next video. Bye.